Hello everyone, welcome to the second devlog on Labyrinthophobia. I'm Digital Kingdom Editor, or DKE for short. In this devlog, I'll go over what I've accomplished since the last devlog, any updates made, and what I am hoping to achieve by the next devlog. Timestamps are on screen now if you'd like to jump to a particular section in this video. Without further ado, let's get into it. Let's delve into what I've accomplished since the last devlog. Significant progress has been made as you can see from loading into the game. As you can see, I have a custom player model, but all you can see right now are their arms holding a pistol, and when you move around and perform different player movement actions, the animations respond accordingly. Crouching has also been implemented, and when you crouch, the camera will act like it's moving the player's head in a realistic fashion, but no real crouching animation has been assigned to it just yet. This is something I want to add later on when I figure out multiplayer functionality, but for now, there's a way for you to toggle crouching for sneaking around. Inspired by Undercord, on the corners of the screen, you can see what is a mask overlay effect, where the corners of your vision are cut off, helping to enhance the immersive experience a little more. I like to have this effect look a bit more realistic, as it's just currently a PNG image as part of the HUD, but maybe in the future I can add it to the head so it actually bobs with the head and it looks just a bit better. Weapon swing has been implemented to make it feel more realistic, and feels quite nice when I look around. I'll probably have to do some minor tweaking to it, but overall, I'm quite happy with how the weapon swing has turned out. The pistol that you can see on screen also has the capability to shoot, but it's very limited at the moment. When I shoot this cube, for example, there is a bit of physics that is applied to the cube, but eventually, I plan to have it do more, such as reduce enemy health and have it play some particle effect when it hits an enemy or a wall. There is a nice interaction feature put into place as well. When I hover over an interactable object, such as this power switch, there is an interactable dot that fades onto the screen, and when I look away, it fades out. The interaction button is set to E, so when I am able to interact with this power switch, the power switch animation plays and the power switch is flipped. I plan on having this power switch be used as an objective required to escape the maze, but that'll be implemented later down the line. I also have an extremely primitive random maze selector in place, and I'll demonstrate that now. In the random selector, I have two objects that it has the option to randomly select, a cube and a sphere. Each time the game is loaded up, a cube or a sphere will be loaded in a set position and rotation that I have specified. Just replace the cube and the sphere with a different maze layout, and you pretty much got yourself a random maze selector. As stated earlier, this is pretty primitive, but once the mazes have been fully fleshed out, it'll all start to come together a bit better. Speaking of the maze, I've worked on the first maze design a little bit, so let me take you around and show you the atmosphere I'm hoping to create with this game. Of course, it's not fully finished, but I think so far, the progress with it has been pretty solid, and I really like the way it feels realistic enough and looks really good to me, especially in these early stages. I plan on also adding lights inside of the maze every now and then, as you can occasionally see in this footage here, and I'll add in some rooms that would be good points of interest while you're going through the maze, but that will probably be put in the next devlog. That wraps up everything I've done. Now, I haven't really done any major updates, but I am sad to report that the VHS effect unfortunately did not look good over top this kind of camera, so I will not be adding that in. However, I think what I have right now is phenomenal, and I've done minor tweaking to the chromatic aberration by increasing its intensity just a tad to give it a slight bit more of that VHS tri-coloring effect you might see. I've also fixed a few bugs with sprinting and the stamina bar, mainly preventing you from sprinting backwards and fixing an issue where if you hold down the left shift, the stamina bar would drain even when the character was not moving. I also added this nice fanning animation for the stamina bar when the player sprints, and the stamina bar will also fade out when the stamina has been fully regenerated. That's all the updates I've done, so here's what I hope to do by next devlog. Finish at least two mazes to better demonstrate the capabilities of the random maze selector. It will probably take a while to fully create those mazes, so what I mean by finish in this case is to have an entrance and exit of some kind, and be able to have about at least 50% of the maze done, with empty rooms and narrow hallways. Actually finishing the mazes will come later down the line, but I want to be able to work with the random maze selector on bigger levels and templates instead of just a simple cube and sphere. Flickering rights. I think it would be cool to figure out how some of the lights in the mazes could flicker in order to give it an even creepier vibe. This will go hand in hand in finishing up the mazes, and I want to be able to showcase a much better atmosphere with flickering lights. Enemy AI. All I want it to do for now is to be able to randomly wander through the maze, and when it spots the player, it'll be able to chase down the player until the enemy loses sight of the player and loses interest. Since the mazes might take a bit to do, I think that's all I truly want to focus on for the next devlog. On some good news though, I got Digital Kingdom to actually help me out with level design since I've been kind of stumped on how the layouts of each maze should be, so shout out to them and go check us out on the Digital Kingdom channel. And there you have it folks, the slow but steady progress with the world of Labyrinthophobia. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on all things with Labyrinthophobia. My name is Digital Kingdom Editor, DKE for short, and I'll see you in the next one.